Hi guys welcome or welcome back to my channel. For this video I thought it would be nice to know how offensive can my subscribers get, and I think it wouldn't be wrong of me to say that you all didn't disappoint me, I'm proud of all of you bitchy bitches. Before we start, let me just say that I appreciate all of you submitting these responses and helping me out, so a big thank you to all of you, and please don't get disheartened if your response wasn't chosen here, because I got more than 4000 responses, and it was hard for me to choose. I don't think I need to put any disclaimer, because it's written in the title that these opinions are going to be offensive, so without wasting any more time let's get started with the video. Ok I know I would be killed after this, but listen I feel Blackpink is overrated. Actually the girls are extremely talented, but there are other girl groups better than BP who don't have as popularity. I accept that their girl crush was a new concept when they debuted, but now everyone does it. I personally want them to experiment like Stay, with such a nice song, but it being a Ray asterisk asterisk hole never let them try with concept also they starve blinks. I agree it's a strategy for attention when they come back, but it's really mean towards the fan base standing them. They have nice voices and skills, but in pop there are more GG groups which can do this. And it's a bivis that they had big three privilege because of which they got hyped and i agree they are not alone getting that advantage cause many others get it too also this is an opinion not fact that's what i feel ohk by sorry blinks starting off with a very basic and popular opinion that you can find on twitter quite easily just by typing blackpink or no maybe if you just type the word black you will at least get one response oh my god blackpink are literally so overrated i can't even whenever i do these type of videos and talk about blackpink or bts you all like to complain how kpop youtubers only really talk about blackpink when in reality you all do the same Half of the responses are filled with the same opinions about either Blackpink being overrated, or BTS being undeserving of their fame anyways. To respond to this opinion, I would like to respectfully disagree. Yes I do agree with the big three privilege part, because they sure are privileged, but even if they were from a smaller company, I'm betting they would have, did good around their debut period the reason being how conflicting. Their concept was to all the other groups at that time period, when every girl group was coming back, or debuting with a cute concept they revived the girl crush concept which was appealing to the public. Also, I understand that there are groups who are technically better than Blackpink in many aspects but them being more capable and deserving of success doesn't cancel out Blackpink's deservingness of being the top girl group, so no they aren't overrated in my personal opinion. I'm tired of male idols being allowed to do horrible things without any consequences meanwhile a girl messes up once and they get hate constantly and non-stop just because they are girls. Example Stray Kids or NCTVS Mamamoo, Hwasa gets hate for everything she has done, even if she apologizes meanwhile NCT and Stray Kids do horrible fucked up things and nobody does anything more, so they defend them saying they are best boys, and they have learned from their mistakes, when they clearly have not. Mamamoo does have to be held accountable, and called out as well cause they have done bad things too, I'm just saying pop stands need to accept the fact that they are misogynistic, change that and start holding everyone accountable not a Mumu or a Stay or a Xen also sorry for my English, it isn't my first language. First of all your English is completely fine and secondly facts, the misogyny in K-pop stands really jump out in situations like these, you explained it better than I could have. Let me just add one more example, which I talked about on my Insta as well. It's about the hypocritical behavior of K-pop stands, when it comes to dealing with bullying scandals that are going on these days in the K-pop war all. We have Hyunjin from Stray Kids and Sijin from G-Idol and both are accused of being bullies in the past, but if you look at the public's response or comments at any post mentioning them, you will notice how K-pop stands can't quote unquote trust these idols anymore, whenever it comes to Sijin, but how these K-pop stands are quote unquote, done with fake accusations against idols, when it comes to Hyunjin, not saying you should hate on Hyunjin or love Sijin. You should just keep the same energy, and stop with this misogynistic behavior. Like Water by Wendy was not a good song. I saw a lot of people saying sotty, but I just don't see it. OFC her vocals were beautiful, but the song was a little boring for my tastes. 
I actually like ballads, but this song just didn't do it for me. However, I'm glad Wendy got a successful solo debut. I agree with this opinion. For me personally the song is boring too, and I wouldn't listen to it, but I think it's perfect for people who like this genre of music. To me it feels more of an OSG than an actual debut song, but anyway seeing Wendy back makes me really happy. Jip gets a lot of unnecessary hate. I can understand him getting hate for his actions, but for his looks? That must be the least thing he should be hated for. The way everyone would jump on a person, if he slash she says an idol is ugly, but starts praising a person, if he slash she says Jip is ugly is typical hypocritical behavior. I'm not trying to make him look like a great human, but stop making fun of his physical appearance. I agree, I don't know why you thought of this opinion as something offensive, because it's literally just actual human decency, but I'm still glad you said that, it's okay to make memes and stuff I guess, but to make fun of how someone looks is just rude and disgusting no matter who you are making fun of and what they have done. Also, I think that JYP stands specially onces and agaces are harsh on JYP even on the things that don't even concern. The more their faves at all. I remember JYP getting a bunch of hate, just because he made a comeback, I mean he is an artist himself, and deserves to release music, if he wants to don't listen to it, if it bothers you, but don't go around sending hate. I want BTS and BLACKPINK to disband badly. Everywhere I go, I see people bragging and praising them, while dragging other groups down, like we get it, they're big, but you don't have to remind me every second about it. It's impossible to watch a video without seeing people spam Blackpink in your area, BTS Kings or something similar in the comments, even if the videos are unrelated to those groups. It's insane how cocky and childish their fan bases are. The fact that some K-pop stands can't differentiate between a group and a fandom makes my blood boil. I agree that armies and blinks can be very annoying at times, but that is every other fandom out there, them being annoying has nothing to do with the group themselves, so I don't understand why you would want them to disband. Victims need to shut up about their bullying accusations. If you didn't have the balls to say something years ago, then it probably wasn't that bad in the first place. They are just coming out now to ruin the careers of idols. Bullying should not be related to that. If you're saying something just to ruin an idol's life, you're doing them greater harm than what they did to you. Excuse me, um. This is the main reason why people don't come forward at all when they are bullied or are wronged in any other way. Because of people like you, victims shouldn't be scared to shut up no matter when they come out. It takes so much courage. To talk against bullies especially, if they have fan bases dedicated to them who are ready to defend them no matter what, so it makes sense that people wanna come out when there is already a case to solidify their claim. And if victims coming out and speaking about what happened in the past bothers you that much, I advise you wait and stay neutral instead of trying to pick a side the truth will come out someday so. Sunk pop idols, example. Chewie, Sakura, Joy, are just visuals with no real talent and their popularity compared to other members in the group who can sing, and dance just shows how why back quote all are so superficial, and think of idols as pretty dolls, and not artists I think this opinion makes half sense, but could have been worded better, these girls are definitely talented, but K-pop stands sure seem to bias them more quote on. Quote prettier idols more, which then leads to a great difference in popularity between the members of a group, but to say that Joy, Sakura or Chewie are just visuals with no real talent is just untrue. Super M would be nothing without B. Kyan, or even Team in TBH. I mean, his vocals are superior, and I feel like he ties all the members' voices together. No hate to the others, but B. Kyan is really good at what he does, and I'll miss his voice while he's in the military. I personally disagree with this opinion like I literally have the opposite opinion. I feel like B. Kyan along with Tamen sometimes feel out of place in Super M's music and their whole vibe I don't know why, but I just don't really think they fit in with Super M's concept that much. They suit more mature concepts, while Super M does more 4th gen type of concepts. But their recent song was a bop and I think it finally fit all of the members. 
being pretty and or popular matters a lot. Let me include two examples in this, Irene and Woodgen. Irene was in her attitude scandal where she yelled at a staff for around 22-30 minutes. She did apologize, but read the loves were quick to defend her, make excuses, clear the searches and god knows what else. Now, if instead of Irene, it was say, Yeri, then how would Reva Loves react? I'm mentioning Yeri, because she's always been the most hated member for being useless, as well as being fat and ugly. Ot for Reva Loves still exist, like a certain someone ahem, and bash her. I'm half sure Eva Loves would not defend Yeri as much as they defended Irene. Another scenario, when Felix and Lino, were accused of sap, stays were quick to defend them. But when it was Wujin, then where were these defenders? Wujin was dragged to hell, as well as being called ugly, and compared to Sid the science kid. WJ also was the least popular member then, and wasn't liked for his looks. If WJ was somehow as handsome according to Stays, or well liked slash popular as Lino or Felix, then how would Stays react? I bet they would had defended Woodgen as they defended Lino and Felix. So, yes. Pretty or popular privilege does exist. I see your point of view, and do kinda agree as well, but to be very honest, it doesn't stop there, it's just who is K-pop stan's favorite at this point. If Irene being pretty is the reason why she got less hate than explained Jenny getting hate literally every day for no reason at all, people consider her one of the prettiest idol as well, don't they she is also one of the most popular idol of 3rd gen, but she is still K-pop stan's biggest punching bag. I think it narrows down to who people want to believe, and who they don't, but yeah pretty privilege is real. Also the Woojin situation, I think all K-pop stands owe him an apology, after what they have done specially stays that quote unquote always had an instinct about him lol. If you stand one of Stray Kid slash Atis slash the boy Z I don't see the need to stand the other two on the basis of standing for the music. Just to make absolutely clear, no hate US intended to the GRPS or fans this includes. I don't hate Oyal, or the boys, it's an opinion, and it's totally okay to disagree. I get that Stray Kids and Atis are both incredibly talented GRPS of 8, and the boys are an insanely talented GRP of 11, but IDK, I don't see the point in having to stun all three. To preface this further, I stand Stray Kids, and have done since Mirror. At that time, I found the boys, no air, and that is, say my name. Having stand SKZ through multiple eras, and listened to Atis and the boys since that point, do y'all not realize that they all three fall into the same category? Levanta and Wave obviously sit at a different table, but Wonderland, Double Knot, Side Effects, Kina, Steeler, Reveal, ETC, sit at the same table. They all fall under the same dark BG concept and I don't dislike these songs, why would I continue to listen to them if they weren't good, but don't you see the similarities? Why do I need to stun the other if we go by music slash overall concept? People said that watching the kingdom stages was the pink ale of this, but some of y'all don't realize it. Member lineups, variety shows, and other GRP content clearly make standing the GRPS worth it, but IDK, none of them seem particularly that revolutionary. And did I only mention title tracks? Yes. Is that a possible reason? No. I've listened to a lot of Atis and Stray Kids Ed. I know their discographies, and they are definitely different from one another, but the issue is that, if people aren't particularly interested in the title, they won't check out the album where the versatility is. Stray Kids Clay 2, Yellowwood has some beautiful b-sides, that are the complete opposite of the title track, but Side Effects is arguably one of SKZ's most disliked titles. Who actually listened to that album after hearing the title, especially non-stays? IDK. This was a mess, but I hope it made sense. I think I agree with your opinion, because I stunned the boys out of the three, and I listened to the rest of the two groups as well, so I definitely see your point, and not just the title tracks, but the concepts or the overall vibe of these three groups is very very similar, but you shouldn't expect people to not stand all three of them, because at the end of the day they are still their own groups with different specialties. 1. Who actually stands boy groups? 
they are so ugly and their songs are so bad too, those stan list videos are fake. You can't be stanning 100 plus groups. I think stanning more than 20 groups is dumb. You can't keep up with all of them 3, be honest. You do think your idols look ugly sometimes. You can't always think they are pretty slash you know one of the members are always uglier than the rest. Just admit it. Because no one admits it for, I'm in midzy, and I love them so please, don't call me a fake fan. I ain't never seen two pretty best friends. It's always one of them gotta be ugly. One people who only listen to pop shouldn't have opinions on rap too in the nicest way possible. Most pop idols can't rap, and it ruins their songs when they do attempt to. This obviously doesn't apply to all groups and I get that not all idols have trained as rappers I just don't get why their companies force raps into their songs Sai these two opinions kind of have the same point, that is most K-pop idols can't rap, and I will have to sadly agree that idol rap is really different from actual rapping. I mean rapping stands for literally rhythm and poetry and most idols don't write their stuff, and even if we don't talk about that, and just mention technique then still what most idols do, is talking or whispering in a deeper voice, rather than actually rapping. SM stands never want to admit, that BTS paved the way- Did I lie? Did I lie? Did I fucking lie? A making an opinions video without discussing who paved the way, none are impossible. So here we go BTS paved the way, and yes I totally agree most SM stands never admit that BTS paved the way and I think we all know where they get this from Kofli Suman Kof. I feel like it's not even an opinion at this point, but just a plain fact, people that don't agree with BTS paving the way really look like flat earthers to me, but you do you I guess. I don't find girl crush or female badass concepts as women empowerment as certain stands find it, because it just perpetuates the stereotype that, if we need to be treated equally we must be more masculine and acquire traditional masculine traits and being feminine. Soft and cute is not cool, my actual problem with girl crushes, that most of the songs are about I'm not like other girls, I'm breaking up with you, go cry or smth like that I have some exceptions but these are just my personal thoughts. Certain songs I feel promote female empowerment are Butterfly by Luna, Lion by G-Idol, and some more. I weren't able to express properly and completely, but hope it was understandable. She's got a point, she's an icon, she's a legend, and she is the moment. Now come on now. So many languages in the world, but you decided to speak facts. I honestly don't understand why K-pop has given Pick Me Girl concept, the name of girl cross or female empowerment. It's not empowering females. If you are putting them down to prove how you are different in your songs Lmao, make it make sense. Anyways I know cultured people like me will always feel empowered with Cheer Up as their background song. I'm honestly tired of the whole so and so member is mistreated crap no, they are not they just didn't get line slash screen time, and we know it happens in every group, I say this as a stan of the groups I will list next, win win of NCT Wavy, Lino of Stray Kids, Jin of BTS, Sehun of EXO, I could go on and on at this point it's obvious, that the companies just want to have one member, that doesn't get as much as the rest, so that they get some sort of attention for it remember, when Jin didn't get 30 seconds of screen time in Dynamite and ARMY got pissed, obviously there are varying degrees of drasticalness of these instances, but still also, the term is mismanaged you want to rave about how your faves are mistreated, because they only got one comeback this year, blinks. I'm looking at us, please stop your causing an overuse of the word, and when groups are actually mistreated badly, one example would be the East Light, TW slash slash physical and verbal abuse in case you want to look it up, people turn a blind eye sorry for how much of a rant that was lol 100% agreed. K-pop stands have a weird obsession with throwing around words like mistreatment and mismanagement. It's almost as if they have romanticized being mistreated. The other day I saw a TikTok where someone was like I always end up biasing the mistreated members. And they had Chewy as their twice bias and the reason for her mistreatment was she was standing behind everyone in the cry for me poster. And I was like huh, how is that mistreatment Lmao? 
she is the tallest so of course she will be at the very back, like hello common sense, and exactly there are, so many groups, that are actually mistreated, and it's sad how no one actually gives a damn about them. Anyways guys that's it for today's video, I hope you all didn't get too pissed from this video, because at the end of the day these are just opinions. I might make a part 2 of this video so feel free to comment your offensive K-pop opinion in the comment section. Thanks for watching as always, if you are new to my channel, please do consider subscribing, and if you are already a subscriber here is your gift.